I'm here in Temp, Arizona near Phoenix and it's 110 degrees outside. This is a 3D printed house built by Perry in a collaboration with Habitat for Humanity and 3D Construction. This house has all kinds of unique features that we're gonna go take a look at inside. From out here, you can see some of the unique texture choices they've made with this entrance, along with some of these 3D printed columns on the exterior. The Cobod printer they used for this building is able to do start-stop quite well, which is unique compared to many of the other printers we've looked at. The start-stop function often tends to cause clogging in the hose, so having a system capable of this without having to worry about stuff like that is a pretty big advantage if you want to achieve some of the designs they have here. This building also features some enormous lentils that span maybe 15, 18 feet. The above the lentil is printed and that looks like a concrete block, acts like a B. Each corner has a reinforced column that will serve as the mount for the roof. Here's a closer look at that textured pattern I was talking about. It's an extra layer thick here, so you have kind of a depth to the design. Over here you can see where they have the insulation, foam insulation, between the inner and outer portions of the wall. There's also metal pieces acting as tension strength, um, connecting the inside and exterior walls. Now let's take a look inside. So now we're in the building and we're going down this hallway. And here you have the den or a bedroom, and then over here is the garage. Then all the other bedrooms and bathrooms in kind of a residential or dormitory kind of section over there. So here's that garage. It's very spacious, easily fits two cars, maybe even a third if you pulled it up really far on uh, parked sideways. Some creative space. You could definitely do something pretty cool in here. Now we're kind of entering the kitchen. They don't include the garage in the livable space when they're called 1,600, 1,700 square feet. So the total area of this house is actually 2,400 square feet. Here we've got the kitchen. You can see over there is where all the appliances will go. They have the electrical and then the 240 wire for, I assume, the oven or stove top. This will serve as an island for the kitchen. And it's going to be a nice big open area. As you can see, there's kind of a dining room here in front of me and the bedroom's over there, another bedroom, the master bedroom over here. Here are the two children's bedrooms, along with a restroom in between them. There's a third room to the right that's a den, which could also be used as a bedroom. Notice the thick layer of spray foam insulation in between the inner and outer walls. This is the master bedroom, finally has its own master bathroom. There's a few features, along with the walk-in closet, there's a few features in here that we're going to touch on uh, that are found kind of throughout the building. So here you can see these chases were left open by, I assume, stopping and starting the printer again. These don't look like they were sliced with a spatula, although they could have been. Uh, the, this was a start-stop function, it appears. Then they'll, I would imagine, connect all the wiring and then either put drywall or some kind of smooth concrete spackle uh, smooth finish on. You can see here they have expansion joints. So many of the printed buildings that I've seen have cracks everywhere. They didn't want to have cracks in this building because obviously that's aesthetically unpleasing. They instead opted to make the gaps themselves by creating these expansion joints with silicone inside. That way you don't end up with these large portions of monolithic concrete that tend to crack when temperature changes happen over time. Over here we have this back porch area and you can also see one of the first trusses for the roof. This will go spanning all the way across along with the rest of them that are sitting over there. This is one of the first homes to be 3D printed in America with the intention of people actually living in it. SQ4D sold a home in advance of building it. Icon built four homes in Austin with the intention of having people live in them, but the second floor is stick built. This one story home is completely 3D printed here in Arizona, where it has two slabs on this side and another slab on this side. It'll be interesting to see what kind of construction they opt for for the rest of the slabs on this site. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, and let me know what you think of this building in the comments. My name is Clarence McAllister. Um, I'm with 3D Construction, based here in Phoenix, Arizona. 
we look at different uh, technologies and we we focus on, on 3D printing, uh, specifically uh, Perry. So we reached out to Perry. Uh, they were eager to enter the U.S. market. So we met with them. They visited us here in Phoenix. Uh, they were interested. Perry wanted to, to focus on another project that they could showcase. Uh, we couldn't find a better part and habitat for humanity in the Arizona Central chapter. So we went to them, it's been probably two years ago with this idea on uh, building a 3D printed house. They embraced the project. Um, it took us, again, the pandemic came along and uh, we worked through the pandemic, so it was probably 18 months that we worked with the architect Candelaria and associates. Uh, Mark Candelaria is a principal with the architectural firm and he also sits on the board of Habitat, Central Arizona chapter. Uh, so his team got together, uh, provided some preliminary samples, worked through it. Over the city of Tempe, they were very helpful getting our plans approved. It still took us quite a while. Habitat and all the generous partners were able to um, bring people on early in the process and include them um, in what was being designed and what was being planned. So you'll see um, the electrical, the plumbing, and all the trades were baked in early on. Um, we worked closely with the city of Tempe. We've had a partnership with them for 30 years and they were just tremendous, helping us um, anticipate what it was gonna take to get this home fully permitted, which is, which is what we were able to do. So in building this house, and this being the first fully permitted uh, home in the United States, uh, with the electrical and the plumbing in the walls, the, the foundation, uh, Structurally, this, this house is built like a tank. Um, the, the walls, in this case, are not load-bearing. We're using a, a wood structure uh, for the roof. But, as you can see, all of the walls are 3D printed. All the walls are 3D printed. The breakfast bar that you saw in a previous shot has been 3D printed. And then, for the electrical, we developed this chase system. So, the wiring will come in from above and drop in to this and of course as you've got if you look around you'll see where the, the plumbing has been uh, in the walls as well so this is really up to American standard Candelaria and Associates was the architect on this project uh, Mark Candelaria is on the board of Habitat and that's how originally this started Mark Candelaria designs high-end homes so when he was brought on to do this project he didn't just build a standard 3D printed house. What he built was basically one of his mini mansions shrunk down to 1,600 square feet. And so when you see the final house, it'll just absolutely blow you away. This, this house will be solar. It also has incredible built-in features that are just not found yet in anything that's been 3D printed. So that's part of what makes it really exciting. It's, it's a house that wows you. In addition, one of Habitat's partners, Cox Communications, is wiring this house as the home of the future. So think about what Disney had years ago with the home of the future. That's what all these partners are looking at this house as. Something that we're not just building a 3D printed house, but we're building something that just says, wow. Uh, again, in the middle of the pandemic, Everything shut down. We started having Zoom calls every couple of weeks, every two weeks. Uh, and then we were, we were getting ready to print. Uh, the printer could not leave Germany. And we couldn't bring anybody from Germany either. So that took a couple, probably six months to figure out. And uh, uh, the printer arrived in Houston. Uh, then came over here, we were only able to bring one person from Germany. Uh, and the rest of the Perry team was here, based in the US and uh, we worked through it. So this building, uh, this house, is 1,700 square foot uh, house in uh, Tempe, Arizona. And uh, it's a three bedroom, um, two bathroom, two car garage. And there's already been a family that's been identified to live here, I believe two weeks ago. The family was introduced to the house. Um, in the next week or so, uh, the trusses will be will be assembled on top of the of the house. Uh, we expect to have it done this fall. So we're still evaluating the cost, but of course the goal is to build more affordable homes, build them faster, 
build them cheaper, build them more energy efficient and sustainable. It's no secret that Arizona and pretty much the entire United States is facing a um, affordable home shortage and crisis. In Arizona, we're about 150,000 units short. This is just one 3D printed home. It answers a larger question and it really talks about the implications. What if we could print more of these faster? One reason we wanted to jump in with so many generous partners, if we didn't start here, we would still be two years in the past and, and we really need to bring the technology forward. It's not really for Habitat to figure all this out on, our, on its own. We want to be the convener and make sure that these neighborhoods are getting the housing that they need. One of the issues that we're addressing here is housing affordability. Obviously, across the United States, more and more people can't buy homes. Our ultimate goal here is to get down to 10, 20, 30 percent less than the cost of a traditional home. That's really exciting for us. Um, Habitat has such a need across their 1,100 uh, chapters here in the United States alone. We're hoping we can change that. One of the issues with home building right now, besides cost of material, is labor. There just aren't enough people to, uh, to do this, this work. Well, the printer only needs two people to actually operate it. So you have a lot less people on site. You need a lot less laborers overall. So that's exciting to us. Another piece of this is for communities like in Northern Arizona or Northern California that have been ravished by fire, uh, fire and wildfires in the last several years, um, these homes uh, can be fireproof. Obviously, 3D construction with the, the printing makes the walls fireproof. We're hoping eventually we'll be able to 3D print the roofs. If we can 3D print using metal or concrete or some other material, we're even looking at potentially adobe in, in remote areas where there's a need for housing, but it's hard to get the materials in, um, where we can actually use material that's close to the location. But what's really exciting is if we could make fire proof homes. What a difference that would make for places like Paradise, California that was completely ravished by wildfire a couple years ago and other places all around the United States where the fire as we get climate changes and we have more extremes, more communities are in danger and we're hoping we can make a real difference there as well. So again, very exciting when you have a, a a, mater a material and a process that not only can make things more affordable, but can just really attack a crisis in our country right now and make a huge difference. So we're very excited about that possibility as well. The likes and subs get me further in the YouTube journey and open up the opportunities of what kind of content I'm able to provide to you. When companies see I have a bigger following, they're more willing to open up to me and allow me to film the exciting technologies that they're working on. See you in the next one.